Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Uh, if you were here four weeks ago, I mentioned to you that this whole uh, message was inspired by uh, a, a very well-known uh, pastor in our local community here in Santa Clarita who wrote the book, Better Together. And I just want to say a few things about Rusty George. Pastor Rusty George is someone who has literally impacted this community in amazing ways. And uh, I've had the honor and privilege to um, not only become his friend, but, uh, but to see him as a mentor, someone that I can look up to, someone that I can talk to um, and ask questions uh, as we do this wonderful, beautiful thing called ministry, which can be brutal and beautiful, right? And, uh, and so it's cool to be able to talk to someone that understands, um, you know, what our, our calling, that understands our journey, our walk. And, uh, and as I, you know, got to uh, learn more about Rusty and, and, and even un- understanding about what his heart was on writing this book, I thought to myself, I looked at my staff, I said, you know, what? we need to do a series called Better Together. And, uh, and it's been a tremendous blessing. We've seen so many people come to Christ because of it. And uh, we've also seen people uh, receive healing, restoration. And so it's such an honor and a privilege to have Pastor Rusty with us today. We had a great 8 a.m. service. I don't know what's going to happen at the 10. It's just going to be very spontaneous. We'll see what happens. But just to give you a little background about him, if you've never heard of Pastor Rusty, George from Real Life Church here in Santa Clarita, um, you, can't, you can't preach a message on Better Together and not want to invite people from the community that are doing the same thing you're doing. Okay, we're both pastoring two churches in the same community, obviously here, and uh, but we have the same mission, the same purpose that God wants and has for this valley, and that is for people to come to know Jesus Christ. And uh, some things they they started. This is pretty awesome. It's inspiring. They started their church in a movie theater, and from the movie theater they graduated to a high school, West Ranch High School. And then from West Ranch High School, they graduated into their amazing, beautiful, gorgeous facility here in Valencia. And uh, they've, they've grown to thousands and thousands of people, which is awesome. And uh, a few things just so that you learn about him. Um, their, their church is big on local outreach and, uh, and not just local but global. And they've done things with uh, the Bouquet Senior Chapel, Saving Innocence, Triple uh, X Church, which is a ministry that reaches... Um, uh, people in the porn industry, uh, Fleet Street Bikes, Savia. Savia is right here in the city of New Hall, and it has many local outreaches. It helps single mothers, uh, addictions, just different things that, uh, that they've built there. Uh, one more foster care initiative. Uh, they have a homeless outreach, uh, a strip church LA where they reach out to strippers and help them restore their life. Uh, which is amazing. And then, of course, uh, they continue to uh, have their global outreach, which is reaching the uh, Czech Republic, Central and South America, Africa, South, Southeast Asia. And the list just goes on and on and on. And when you, when you get to meet someone like this, you can only get better being in the person's presence. And that's hopefully the goal for us. As you connect with other people, as you start building relationships um, the goal is that we, we better each other. You don't want to be the person that, that, that walks away and is completely drained uh, because of a conversation you had with someone that literally just sucked the life out of you. You want to walk away from people and feel inspired and motivated, and that's what this man has been to, to me. And he always brings inspiration, motivation, some correction, because there's some things that I, didn't, I was thinking differently, and he brought, without him knowing, he brought the right idea to my, my, my mind, my heart. And I immediately apply it. But uh, without further ado, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give me the most incredible, okay, Elevate Church welcome. Are you guys ready? For Pastor Rusty George. Let's give it up for him. Come on. (laughs) Pastor. It's so great to have you. Thank you. It's an honor. Yeah, we had, we had a great, you can be seated, we had a great 8 a.m. service. Um, and, um, and, you know, something that we believe at Elevate Churches is, is, uh, is honor. And we want to give honor to where honors do. And uh, one of the things that uh, I can tell you about Rusty and, uh, and just his congregation is that the reason this man is better is because of the people that have been surrounded around him. 
And uh, he has a congregation that believes in, in the mission, the vision that God has given them, the mandate God's placed on you. And you have literally pierced darkness uh, with God's marvelous light. And the Bible does say that he, he gives us the, the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. Mm-hmm. And you have been preaching God's word for over 20 years. And, uh, and you constantly see lives being transformed and changed. Therefore, we wanted to honor you with this beautiful, amazing sword that my wife, wife's bringing up. You want to come up? I got this for you. And, uh, and this sword, here you go, babe. This sword represents um, the sword of the spirit. And, uh, and we want you to, you know, it, do whatever you want with it. <laughs> Hurt someone. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Look at that. That's the real deal there. Yeah. That is Thank the real deal. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is the real deal. And, and we, we are genuinely uh, honored and blessed to have you here with us, seriously. And, Thank you are, you. and you're a great friend, Pastor Thank Rosa. You. You're, you're, you've just become a really good friend I to me, my that. family, our church, and uh, we love you. Thank you. Yes, both. and on behalf of uh, Elevate family, we want to say thank you for being with us today. Yeah. Thank you to your beautiful wife, Lori. Uh, we got to meet her. And you guys are just a blessing and a great example to follow. So one of the scriptures that comes to mind when we think of you is Isaiah 58, 8. And it says, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. So I know that this is... I know you've been 24 years going, but I know that God is about to do great things in your life with your family. So thank, thank you, you so much, much for being with us. Oh, it's what, awesome. such an honor. Thank you, thank thank you, you. so much. I appreciate it. Awesome. How wow. about that? That is, I don't have a sword. You don't have no. a sword, huh? No. I'll, no one's ever given you one. I'll, no. I, uh, I'm from the Midwest, so we have <laughs> shotguns. So that's, uh, <laughs> I can... Uh, I can put that on my gun rack in the back of my <laughs> truck. Now, now you great. know why I hang out with him. <laughs> I, I, I love that. Thank Swords you. and shotguns. That's right. That's, that, that's how we do it. I as think pastors. that's a country song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could write a song. We yes, could we write could. a song together. We could. No, but seriously, it is so it's so awesome to have you here. And and this book really has uh, it has changed our life. When I say our life, our church. Um, because for the last four weeks, mm. this is all they've been hearing, um, and this is this is a great book. It's not it's not just meant to to read. It it it's it has practical principles that you can apply, and uh, definitely definitely a great book for pastors, leaders, and definitely business people. If you're a business person, you know what? Even as as you lead your organization, you will be better. You'll only be as 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 good as the people that are around you. Mm. And so, great, great book. Well, thank you. Thank and you, you. And you took a Sunday off from your church to hang out with us. <laughs> yeah, they that? don't know I'm gone. <laughs> they don't even know you're gone. <laughs> they, they don't even miss me. So, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just, uh, just to give you some context for that, um, and, and I think that you guys, you know this, but just to remind you, um, pastors are, are human, okay? We S- are, say, say that one more yeah, time, please. Just <laughs> broken, flawed individuals. That yeah. happen to have this job God's called us to uh, doesn't make us any better or any different than you. And so um, with that comes all of the brokenness that we all deal with. And especially for guys, we deal with this competitive kind of want to be better than you kind of thing. And so that often gets translated into I want my church to be better than yours. Yeah. I want my church to be bigger than yours. <laughs> and I grew up in a church in Kansas um, where I'm pretty sure the pastor believed, because he would say this from time to time, that it was only our church that was going to heaven. So <laughs> there are only going to be 600 people in heaven, only and that was us. Uh, so uh, I just kind of had this mentality of it's, it's, you know, it's just us. And so we would look at other churches as like competitors. Mm. And I, you know, started doing ministry 20 some years ago in a church in Kentucky, and then I, I moved out here. 15 years ago, and as soon as I got here working at Real Life Church, I quickly realized, man, I I can't do this on my own. I desperately need other pastors and other people to help me out. And and Shepherd of the Hills Church down in the valley, they planted our church before I got here and did an amazing job and were a great friend to us. Uh, Other churches like Church on the Way here in Santa Clarita and Doug Anderson and Marty Walker over at the Sanctuary were such encouragers. Um, that it really helped me figure out this concept of, I guess we are better together. And I'm, I'm yeah. an introvert by nature, mm-hmm. and so 
I'm, I'm good alone, you yeah. know? And yeah. so, and then as a pastor, when you get competitive, you're like, I'll do this alone and I'll do it better than you, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you're right. So that's right. the brokenness of me. But, but seeing how God wants us to do this together was, was a revelation. So there was this one verse uh, that really was kind of the transitional time for me. And it comes out of John 17, and this is like where Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane right before he's crucified. And this is a powerful time. And this, this whole passage is recorded between the upper room and then the garden. But he says this in John 17, verse 20. He says, my prayer is uh, not for them alone. And he's talking about, he's just been praying for the disciples. Now he's praying for all of us. Not just for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Now, that's amazing right there because Jesus himself existed in his own little small group. Hmm. You know, you got the Father, the Son, and the yep. Holy Spirit, the Trinity, which we'll spend the rest of our lives trying to explain <laughs> and never scratch the surface, right? Yeah. But it's like they exist like this, and then Jesus says, I want them to be as close as we are, hmm. and I want them to be right in the middle of our small group. That's just a mind-blowing thing, right? It is. May they also be in us so that the, and he says, if you do that, then the world may believe that you've sent me. And I've given them the, the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I and them and you and me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Now think about that for a second. Have you ever believed in your life that God loves you as much as Jesus? Hmm. But he does. Yeah. And God loves unity and wants us to exist in that kind of unity together. And that's not just in your family and not just with those you vote like and those that you think like and those that dress like you and look like you or have the same skin pigmentation as you. Yeah. But that's everybody. And that's all the church. And what I began to see was it's a whole lot bigger than little C church. It's the big C church because mm -hmm. it's the kingdom of God. And, and we need each other. And sure. I just want you to know how grateful I am to have a friend like your pastor because he has been such a blessing to me uh, in encouraging me and supporting me as well. And this is definitely a two-way street. And you are a great friend and a true, a, a, just a true um, friend, but also a champion for the word of God and the kingdom of God. And you guys are blessed to have him. So I hope you know that. And I hope you show him that from time to time too, because he and his wife are amazing. So I think that's all you had me say about you. Is that right? That's right. Um, so out of that, all of that just kind of came this realization that we are better together. And I I fought against that for so long because I'm an individual that likes to be introverted and individualistic and I'm competitive. And I thought, no, I got this, I got this, I got this, but I didn't have it. And this book really was a result of a lot of that. I love that. I love that. And you know what? This, this not only applies, obviously, to, to churches and leaders and pastors, but this, this really applies to every single one of us in the workplace, in your family, uh, in your community, wherever you go. In Psalms 133, 1, it says this. It says, behold. That word behold means get a hold of this, will you? It says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. And one thing I have, I have learned about just the word unity, if you were to describe a simple definition, unity is simply going the same direction. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything. That doesn't mean we're going to dress the same. You know, we look it's pretty, pretty close. close yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it, but it does mean, it does mean that we're going to honor and we're going to respect and we're going to serve each other in the best possible capacity that we can do. And, and that's, that also brings promotion. When you can be unified, the Bible says this, a, a house divided will not stand. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just, that's so powerful and so true. Not even Satan divides himself. He knows that he has to keep his, his little demons all, in, all unified for one purpose, to bring destruction John 10 10 to steal bring he, he comes to steal kill destroy and so there's something about this beautiful better together and and unity that that we have I I want to I want to give you a, a simple practical uh, visualization if you can imagine this in Amos 3 3 it says how how could two walk together unless they agree and and I started researching just trying to find stories of things that have happened in mm -hmm. in our history and I found something uh, that took place on April 12, 1831. It says, 74 British soldiers 
And, and mind you, the Bible says that we're all soldiers of Christ, every single one of us. It says 74 British soldiers got the surprise of their lives when they marched across a bridge. The bridge at Bruton near Manchester, England was built in 1826 in the new suspension style. Now, being one of the Europe's first suspension bridges and only five years old, it was considered state-of-the-art. So this, this bridge was unmovable, unshakable, unstoppable. I mean, it was the best of the best, but watch this. But as the British troops marched in time, in four columns across the bridge, their synchronized footsteps began a rhythmic resonance, creating a pleasant sort of bounce, and I like that word pleasant, causing some of the men to start whistling in time. Unfortunately, the troops did not realize that the bouncing resonance created uh, more and more of an up and down movement of the bridge until the structure started breaking up and collapse, taking the soldiers with it. And don't worry, none of them died. But I, I, as I read this, I thought, wow, here you have some soldiers who, who were all going the same direction, who were all in unity, who were all marching, synchronized, and that pleasant sound, that resonance that came out of their marching together, right, that better together caused this friction between them and this bridge that was unstoppable, unmovable, unshakable. And I started thinking, I wonder what chains we can break. I wonder what darkness we can pierce. I wonder what miracles we can see come to pass if the local church were just have the the, the, the idea and the heart to come together in unity and imagine what we can do in the kingdom of God. Mm. Just imagine what we can do if we can just understand the power of agreement. There's power in unity. Mm. There's so much power. You know what? I don't know where you're at right now in life. Maybe you're, you have division at home. Maybe you have some division at work. It doesn't matter who's responsible for it. What matters is what are you willing to do? If we just learn to march in God's order, mm. let me tell you something. We can break some stuff off of our, of, off of our own life. Yeah. This is powerful. Yeah, so true. I, I just, that's a great analogy too. I think about the agent of change the church could be in our culture right now. Not even just Santa Clarita, but the world. Think about how divided the world <laughs> seems right now. And if you have any question about that, just go on social media. Yeah. Okay, and type in your own personal political views and see what happens. Um, everybody's <laughs> so got an opinion, and everybody is adamant about it, and it's really just a world of extremists right now when it comes to the loudest voices getting heard. What would the church be able to do if we could stop pointing fingers at each other and highlighting our differences and celebrate the one thing we have in common? which is Jesus. Come on. Um, think, about, think about this. All right, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to count down from three, and I'm going to point at you. I want you to say your first name. Let's all do that together, okay? Three, two, one. Mauricio. Uh, all right, it's kind of a jumbled mess, right? Now, I'm going to count down again. I want you to say your church background, and that might be never been to church, hate church, here because somebody bribed me. Um, <laughs> it could be uh, Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, um, uh, Episcopalian, w whatever it is, okay? Ready? Three, two, one. Got Christian it. church. Okay. Still, jumbled mess. All right. Now, I'm going to count down from three, and I want you to say the name Jesus. Three, two, one. Jesus. Jesus. Think how clear that is. And if we as churches could get a lot more, and as Christians became a lot more known for what we're for rather than what we're against, yeah. man, the impact that we would make. And this is the big thing that Mauricio and I talk about a lot, and that is if the church would just get unified, just here in Santa Clarita, it would have a huge impact. Did you realize that there's only 20% of our valley that attends church on a weekly basis? Now, you've seen a lot of church buildings, or you've heard about a lot of churches meeting in high schools and that kind of stuff, but only 20% actually go. Now, this is, this is Santa Clarita, yeah. one of the greatest places to live on sure. the planet, right? That's right. This is awesome town. <laughs> Come on. Now, that's just if 20% go to church. Think about how much better it would be if 50% went, all right, or 70%. I mean, do you think the traffic would look a little bit kinder? <laughs> Do you think that the Trader Joe's parking lot would be a little bit easier, you know? 
That's where I'm taking my sword. You know, that's where I'm going. <laughs> if, if, if we were just, you know, we're more unified on that. But here's the problem. And this is what Maurice and I talk about a lot. Even if every church in the valley was fully occupied, every seat on every service on a weekend, there still would not be enough seats right. for everybody in our valley. That's why the church has to continue to not just expand, but it has to continue to be unified in understanding and loving each other. Yeah. Now, let me, can I go off on a no, rant please, for a second? Please, All right, let good. me just say this. This is good. It's one thing for <clears throat> Mauricio and I to be friends and support each other's churches, okay? And we have a collection of pastors here in this valley that do that. And a lot of us get together and pray for each other. We celebrate each other. We text each other, praying for you this weekend. Always right before Easter, everybody's texting each other. Big weekend, praying for you. But what if we all did that? Hmm. Can I give you just two things that you could do, even if you think, well, I'm not a pastor. I don't deal with this. You know, Two things you could do. The first thing is refuse gossip. Hmm. Here's what I mean by that. Somebody's going to come to you and say, well, I was going to that church. I don't go there anymore. Do you know what's going on over there? Here's what I heard. Oh, really? Tell me more. You know, and we <laughs> lean in. And there's something that's cathartic about that because, as the old saying goes, we, all, we don't all want a God, but we all want a devil because we want something we're against, right? Because when we're against something, then we're unified in a being against it. And so if it's gossip, we get unified in enjoying that little morsel of information. And you can join in in that. But as I tell our people in our church, everybody carries with them a bucket of gasoline and a bucket of water. And the moment you see the spark of gossip, hmm. you got a choice. You can dump that gasoline on there and go, oh, I've heard that too. In fact, let me just tweet that right now. Okay? <laughs> or you can dump that water on there and simply say, have you talked to them about that? Or you know what? I don't know anything about that. And I don't, I don't want to know anything about that. And just stop it right there. The second thing is to celebrate the wins of other churches, churches that are different than the one that you're in. And I am so against the church shopping thing. Go to a church, stay there, die there. Get in there, live there, grow there. <laughs> that, that sounded a little mean, didn't it? <laughs> no, you know? it sounded great. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> but there's something about digging down deep roots yeah. and going, listen, I don't expect everybody here to be perfect. That's why I'm welcome here. And so we're going to do this together, and we're going to have highs, and we're going to have lows, but we're going to do it together. Yeah. And we grow up in that church congregation, and we see amazing things happen. And all along the while, celebrate those that aren't there. Celebrate the other churches that do it differently. They post something on social media, share it and like it. They tell you about something cool that happened at their church, that's awesome. You don't have to one-up them with yours. You pray for them. Let them know you're praying for their church <coughs> and rooting them on. And when you do that, that creates this, this spirit of unity that is exactly what Jesus prayed for. And that's what I think could change this valley. And, and I like that because it, it's about promoting unity. Every single one of us, it, it's not even a weight. It's a responsibility that we have as believers, especially, especially uh, when, when you read the scriptures, the Bible says, and, and how will they know him? The Bible says they will know him by the way you love one another and how you respect one another. And the only, that, the only way that love and respect comes from is from a place of unity. And, uh, and I, I love what you said about just gossip. If you're not careful, if you're the person that says this, you know, I'm about to pop your bubble real quick. If you're like, man, everybody always brings me all their problems and all their drama as if you're like this wonderful counselor. No. When people bring you all the gossip, the slander, the, the drama, you know what you become? You become their spiritual toilet. And they come and they dump. And what happens after a while in a toilet? <laughs> you can get clogged. Yeah, it, it starts overflowing with all kinds of stuff. And that's what happens with so many people. When you give people permission to come and just dump on you, you're, you're giving not only them permission to keep promoting this, but you're also harming yourself. And, and mm -hmm. when I think about uh, this, it, the, the, the people of Israel constantly had uh, this murmuring and complaining and, and talking. God would say something. They would contradict what God was saying. And then, you know, God would give them a, a promise and, and they would have, you know, issues with believing it. But reading the story of, of these people uh, in, 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 uh, uh, of, of the British soldiers brings me back to the scripture in Joshua 6.1. It says this. 
It says the gates of Jericho were shut tight and guarded closely because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Here's what happens. When you have division, when you have disunity, the scripture tells me is that you literally shut the door of blessing coming in and blessings going out. Mm. You shut the door and the, and the blessings stop. And so in this, in this context of the story, if you read it, there's so much great revelation mm. in this book mm. of Joshua. But a few verses down, you realize that God then gives Joshua, he gives them a, a, a mandate. He gives them an instruction. And he says, I want you guys to walk around the walls of Jericho, around the city of Jericho. And obviously because everything was shut out for them, they had to do something in order to be in sync, in unity. Because God said, the only way I'm going to bless you is for all of you to get unified. Mm. And look what verse, six, uh, verse 16 says this on Joshua 6. It says, and on the seventh day, they finally got unified. They finally all got in agreement. They finally all got in sync. And they all started marching God's orders. It says, and on the seventh time around, the priest blew a long blast on the trumpet. Then Joshua gave the command to the army. He said, shout. And the Lord has given you the city. And we know the story. They shouted and the walls of Jericho came down. There's something powerful and life-changing when the church, when you and I, when all of us, when you and your family, mm -hmm. when you and your coworkers come together and just decide to agree, God does amazing things. Mm -hmm. This is powerful. This is beautiful. This is why I, I wanted to bring you in here, Pastor Rusty, because I want our church to see that it's not us four no more. It's not just about what Elevate Church is doing. It's about what every single church is doing in Santa Clarita. It just so happens that you've become a very good friend. And, uh, but I want them to, to understand that I'm not afraid of, mm. of, of the blessing and all the things that God is doing through your life. I'm actually inspired mm. because if God, if God will do it for you, he'll do it for me. Mm -hmm. And I want them to see that as well. Because some, so some families right now are struggling with, with seeing the dysfunction of their family. And then they see other families. I want them to, to not be jealous of other marriages, other family, other right. kids. But to be inspired and say, you know what? If God can do it for them, he can do it for me as well. And we can be better together. Right. That's so why true. you're here. Yeah. Well, and that's the, the jealousy thing and the being offended by other people. Boy, that is such the, the bait of Satan, that's isn't huge. it? That's huge. And it, it causes you. Think about... <clears throat> You pick up your phone to look on social media, and after a few minutes, you hate everybody on there, right? <laughs> <It's so true. laughs> because they're all promoting their highlight reel, and all you all see is them. your blooper reel, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just all the, you see the dishes in the sink and all yeah, that yeah, stuff, yeah, and they yeah. see, they're getting their kitchen remodeled. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what? I hate you and your kitchen. You know, you just, <laughs> it's just this bitterness, right, that kind of just reeks from within. And, and what it does is it, it makes you count their blessings, but not your own. Yeah. It makes you jealous of what God has given them and blind to what God has given you. Yeah. And just to be able to be unified is to put that jealousy aside, the envy aside, the comparison aside, and let it inspire you to see, look what God is doing there. I know God's doing great stuff in me because somebody's looking at you, jealous of you. And so just to realize God's doing something great, and he'll continue to do that, and you have an opportunity to be a part yeah. of that. And, and just some practical ways to do that is, you know what, F find people that are, that are doing more than you. Find people that may be um, a little bit better than you, maybe in a craft, uh, and, and, and surround yourself with some amazing people. That's why I get around Pastor Rusty because he is doing more than I am. He is reaching more than I am, and, uh, and he has the same, we have the same call we both do. We're, we're called to shepherd and to pastor our communities uh, so I get with him, I sit with him, and I just listen. And, and I think, I think when, when you're a good listener mm. and, and you're trying to be inspired by what, what someone else is doing, it's also great to ask all the right questions too and be vulnerable. It's so hard for people to be vulnerable nowadays. Mm -hmm. But vulnerability promotes unity as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's something special about that. So I, I, I greatly encourage you if, if, you're, if you're in a place right now where you just feel like, man, I just keep feeling like I'm going through this constant cycle of, of I take 10 steps, but I fall back 20. Get with the right they. Get with the right people. Start connecting with them. I'm telling you, something beautiful is going to birth out of that. Right. And it, prom it, promotes, it promotes God's blessing over your life. And I know that today, uh, heaven is looking down on us here at Elevate Church and looking down at Real Life Church and two pastors coming together, talking uh, at, at a congregation. I, I know heaven's just so rejoicing right mm -hmm. now. 
us mm-hmm. doing this, and, and I'm super blessed by you yeah. being here once again. Honored. Seriously, absolutely honored. Well, it's such a thrill because I know what we want to do in this valley. Yeah, and there's so much more that I think Elevate Church can do. Yes, that I would just encourage you: don't stop, just keep going. You may feel like I finally found my perfect church home, and I I know where to park, which is three blocks <laughs> away. You know. Uh, I, I, you know, that's and, our pain. That's, <laughs> and I know where I get to sit, even though I don't, there aren't many seats, and I know everybody there that I sit around and all that. This is just perfect. But guess what? Because there's limited parking, because there's limited seating, there's people that aren't here that should be here. Sure. And you've got friends you'd love to invite, but you're not sure if they would, you know, like the crowd. And there has got to be continued growth and continued expansion. And I know this is your heart for this valley. We need all churches not just to survive. We need them to thrive That's right. in order if we're going to reach everybody in this community. And I would just say to you, don't stay where you are. Keep going. It's a little bit like when you're driving a car. I don't know if you have driven or know how to drive a stick shift, you know, manual transmission. Where, And you can even hear this in the automatic transmissions as well, where you're in first gear and it kind of goes, you know, as it gets higher, what's that mean? It's time to shift gears, right? And so you shift gears, and what does it do when you shift gears? It drops, drops down. down. Yeah. Mm-mm. You know, and here we go again. Mm-mm. And you would never get to gear four without going through gear two and three to get there, but you've got to drop down each time. The same is like growing a church, is there's going to be moments as you guys continue to grow where you're going to have to drop down. And here's what I mean by that. There's going to come a moment where you'll have to sacrifice your seat, your preferences, maybe it's service time, maybe it's, you know, resources to build or finance a bigger facility, and there's going to be something about the next gear you're going to drop into that you're not going to like, and that's just the way that it is, and I want to encourage you, just go with it, because what you love at the size that you're at right now, somebody else will connect with at the next gear that you're going to be at. And you've got to continue to say, you know what? We are better together than we are just staying the way that we are. And that's what we learned. And a lot of times it's a hard way in, fact, in the realization that in order to get to that next level, it was going to cost us something. Yeah, and, and I'm sure on your journey, just reading that you starting in the movie theater and then from the movie theater – uh, going, you would think it's a graduation, but I'm sure there was probably more challenges at the high school. And oh, I, I'm, I'm sure there's some. Yeah, I mean, people see the building now and they think, "Oh, you guys just started." Well, no, we <laughs> we we uh, lugged along in a movie theater for seven years, and you would think it'd be relatively easy, right? Because it's got the seats already there, soundproof room. Throw the you know slides up on the screen. Here we go. Well, not necessarily. Uh, first of all, uh, movie theaters are <laughs> filthy. All right, that's why they keep the lights off. <laughs> um, they literally clear things, clean things with a leaf blower. They come in there, and just, okay, that's it. So yeah. we would come in there at like six o'clock. Sometimes the the manager hadn't shown up yet, so we'd have to, uh, you know, break in in the name of Jesus, of yeah. course. Um, <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, and uh, you know, we just assumed he'd bless that. But anyway, <laughs> we, we'd sneak in there. You know, we'd we, we'd have to, you know start prepping the room and everything, get that ready. And sometimes the craziest things would happen. We literally had the movie come on during the message <laughs> because it's all synchronized, you know, and here it would come. And sometimes, you know, you'd pick up your kids from the nursery and you'd find out they watched The Exorcist. So, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. So uh, anyway, my favorite story is uh, we had a junior high class meeting in a, a, a theater one time, and all the kids were down front, and they were on the floor, and they were wrestling around, and one boy rolled underneath the screen and rolled back out. And when he did, he stood up, and on his back was one of those sticky rat traps oh, with a dead rat. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, all the girls are screaming, and all the boys are like, that's awesome. You know, and, you know we never saw them again, that family. But, but as, that's what we were living with in the theater. And we move out of the theater into the high school. We get into the high school. And the high school is supposed to be great, but now we got to get there at 5.30 because we have to set up chairs. We're in a gym. And we thought they had air conditioners, but they didn't. They had swamp coolers on the roof that didn't have any water in them, so they're just blowing hot air off the roof. Oh, it's like 150. Man. People are passing out. <laughs> we're, we're just saying it's the work of the Spirit. Just let, them, <laughs> let them fall. It's fine. You went Pentecostal That's there, right. right? Yeah. Absolutely. We changed our you denomination. changed the denomination right didn't there. Didn't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway... We, we get through all that. We're living through that. And people are like, oh, we can't wait till we get in the building. We can't wait till we get in the building. And I said, just wait. 
we will get in the building and you will miss these days. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll never miss it. I said, you will. You'll come up to me and say, we miss it, and I'm going to slap you. And then, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, of course. <laughs> and they said, no, 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 we'll never miss it. But what do you know? We get in the new building. And what do they do? They come up and go, you know, it's just gotten so big, and there's so many doors and so many services, <laughs> and I don't know everybody anymore, and I kind of miss the theater days. Are you kidding me? You know, it's just like the Israelites. I want to go back to slavery. You know, yeah. those were the good old days. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Making bricks without straw. That yeah. was great. Yeah, right. And that's the reality you're going to be at is with every step of growth that you take, you've got to remember it's not for you. Yeah. It's for the people who aren't here yet. And you're, there's going to be something in you because this is human nature. I want to go back to where I first came to know Jesus. But where you first came to know Jesus when Elevate was a church of 300, someone else will first come to know Jesus when Elevate's a church of 3,000. Yeah. So help it get there. Yeah. Because that's what they're going to need. That is awesome. Thanks, man. You know, in, in closing, um, doing ministry and doing what we do here, because this, this takes an army of, of, uh, of people to do what we're doing in our community and, and beyond. Elevate Church is not just here in New Hall. We're, we're literally impacting way beyond internationally now. Um, but I, I, w- I want you to know that the analogy that, that Rusty gave of the shifting of gears is what's happening with Elevate Church. How many can already feel the shifting of Elevate Church going to the next level? How many feel that shift? There's a shift already happening here. Um, we're not planning to stay here uh, much longer. We're planning to move into the next season, into the next gear that God has for Elevate Church because there's not enough churches in this city to, to facilitate every single person that lives just in this valley alone. Now, mind you, um, we reach people beyond Santa Clarita. All We do. We, both churches do. But, but we, we want to we mm-hmm. be able to be the, the church that says, you know what, God? We not only took the vision you gave us, because Elevate Church, for those of you that call this place home, this isn't my church. This isn't the leadership's church. It's not the board's church. This is our church. It's your church. And, and the success that this church has um, is based on the embrace that we're willing to take together in unity to be like the soldiers that went marching. Um, the last thing I want to say is this, and, and I've been meditating on this verse. I'm going to be doing a series on this soon, but there's a verse in... Um, in, uh, I believe it's in John, 1 John 5, 4, it says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And I, I don't know what, what God is giving you to do. I don't know what mandate, what business, what, what calling he gave you, but, but check this out. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, mm. our faith. Now, as I start thinking about, you know, what, what, what Rusty and, and, and Real Life are doing together and what every single church is doing in this city and, and what Elevate's doing and what you're doing personally for your personal life. I think about this. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And we can have our we're closing. Thank you. If you're struggling somewhere in life, if there's something that is completely setting you back or you just feel like this depleting of joy, peace, and and you're just thinking, well, that's great. Here you have these two pastors. They're they're talking about ministry, church. No, listen, this this isn't about us. This is about all of us put together. But whatever is born of God, it overcomes. In other words, if, if God, if God breathe life into that vision then that vision will overcome if God breathed life into that family then it will overcome if God breathed life into that situation let me tell you something it will overcome but how do I overcome by faith in this in this new shifting because check this out Elevate Church is not the only one that's shifting in the sense of like okay we're we're, we're, we need more space, etc. more parking, more kids' rooms. That, that's wonderful. But there's a, there's a shifting that's happening in your life because as the church is going through its progression, so are you. That means that God is also shifting you to the next level of maybe spiritual growth. 
God is shifting you maybe to the next level of maybe you've been having this small, uh, you know, business. And God's saying, I'm shifting you from this small business mindset and expanding to having maybe 10 employees, 15 employees. Maybe you're someone that's been so comfortable working at the place you've been working at and, and barely making it. God's saying, hey, I'm shifting you. I want you to be blessed. I want to. And so there's a shifting that's happening in your family, in your life, in your children. But you have to know the season of shift. And remembering that whatever's born of God, the only reason you and I were born is because God gave us his spirit and he breathed life in us, right? Well, I have to remind myself many times, you know what, God? This vision for Elevate Church was born of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if it's true, then it will overcome. Mm -hmm. And you were born of God. And if that's true, you're going to overcome. Are you, are you guys hearing this morning? And, and the only way we can do that is when we can come to a place of unity and when we're marching God's orders in this, in this unity going the same direction. Remember, unity doesn't mean we won't agree on everything. That, that doesn't mean that, that we're going to agree on everything. It, it means that we're going to keep the, the, the overcoming spirit that God placed in us to overcome whatever we face, whatever conflict. But at the end of the day, we know that because our, our families were birthed of God, are born of God because your business was born of God, because your children were born of God, they're going to overcome, but it's going to take cooperation on our part to say, God, I'm going to use my faith and I'm going to see God's vision come to pass individually, but also corporately, corporately. Because this is not a, you're not building Mauricio's church, okay? Um, Rusty's congregation, they're not building Rusty's church. We're, we, we, have, we have an intercessor who's praying for us, and his name is Jesus. And, and because of what Christ has done for us, his love compels us to, to want to spread this wonderful, beautiful thing that we have called the gospel. And it's the gospel that brings people to, to life. And then God then begins to bring a rebirthing of their life, and then guess what? They overcome too. There's not enough churches for people to be in Santa Clarita Valley. So guess what? But we're not going to let that be the excuse of why not. Because everybody has a why not in their life. I say, why not keep shifting? Why not keep growing? Why not keep reaching? Why not keep loving? Why not keep marching in sync so that we can create this resonance sound and this vibration where not only does earth feel the change, but heaven is like, oh, there's a response. Amen? That's what God wants for us. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.